open up a new series, and the series is entitled Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut. Now, 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 some people will think and say, Pastor, Eyes Wide Shut, why not Eyes Wide Open? See, when I think of Eyes Wide Shut, I think of this. I think of the three areas, and I'm going to be talking to you in this series about three various areas that, that uh, our eyes are wide shut. Now, when you say, well, what is Eyes Wide Shut, Pastor? What is that? This is when that, that when something is going on in your life that's contrary to the word of God or the will of God, or even contrary for, for you children, contrary to your uh, parents, or, or, or con that, that it is the opposite, it is going the wrong way, and you know it's wrong, and you see that it's wrong, and you got your eyes open, but you shut your eyes in the sense of shutting your heart and your mind to it. So that's why this, this uh, series is entitled Eyes Wide Shut. Now there are three areas in which we're gonna be talking about in this areas of Eyes Wide Shut and I wanna, wanna mention those areas to you because on this week we're gonna be talking about the area of lust, the area of lust. This is one area that lust, once again, more goes farther than just sexual activity. But yes, there will be some sexual uh, uh, things mentioned in this. Uh, however, we're going to be in the area of lust, in the area of religion, and in, in the area of prejudice. In the area of lust, in the area of religion, and in the area of prejudice. Because in these three areas, you'll find where people in this world shut their eyes to the truth. They shut their eyes to the truth. Now, in the area of prejudice, oh, well, let me go here. In the area of religion, well, Pastor, how do you say people shut their eyes? Because when people are caught up, so caught up in their religion, not in their relationship with God, but in their religion, well, well so that when anything Contrary to their religion, anything different from the doctrine of their religion, they don't want to hear it, even though they're not sure that their religion uh, has all the truth or not. They don't want to hear it because they're caught up in their religion. So, the, the, you know, and in some essence, when it comes to witnessing the people, people who are religious are the hardest people to win to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're the hardest people to get saved. Because they think they got it all together because they have a religion. And some people think, well, religion can take them to heaven. Religion doesn't take anybody to heaven. Only Jesus Christ can get you to God. Only Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk more about that. Now, then the next one is in, in prejudice. When people are taught to hate based off someone's sex, someone's color or their skin or their race or their natural origin or even their beliefs then then when they have those beliefs deep down inside of them where where they're taught that then when the truth comes to them their eyes are wide shut they're wide shut they don't want to see the truth because no, that's not what grandpappy taught me. That's not what grandmama taught me. That's not what, what daddy said. Daddy said, all oh, these people are dogs. And we're going to talk more about that. I don't want to get too deep in that because today we're going to talk about lust. Lust. Because our eyes can become wide shut when it pertains to the lust. Now open up your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, say amen when you get there. And I've, and I've mentioned these scriptures before, and you say, Pastor, there are several scriptures you mention quite often. I can never get away from them, because it's where we live and what we deal with every day. Okay? I'm not, you know, yes, I'm always looking for new manner. New manner, but you know sometimes you can take the old manner and remix it. You know, you ought to see my wife when she's cooking something and she got leftovers in that refrigerator 
And she said, well, I don't feel like cooking a new meal, but I can take that old meal and mix it with that meal and mix it with some of this meal. And, and, and then we have a new meal. We have a new meal because there's no new thing under the sun. Actually, when you look at the Bible and you, when you read your Bible and you go through your Bible, you know, there are not a whole lot of different topics that the Bible really talks about. <coughs> Now, we grab and, and, and pull things, we exegete things out of various topics, and we teach on those things. We teach on those things and we preach on those things. But when you actually, you read your Bible and you look at the theme that is in your Bible, it all points to Jesus. It all points to Jesus. I want to tell you that now for all you Bible scholars. It all points to Jesus. However, you know, after you get through creation, then the Bible talks about faith. And faith is from faith to faith, from the beginning to the end. It's from faith to faith. You'll find faith throughout the whole Bible. You'll find redemption throughout the whole Bible. You'll find forgiveness and repentance throughout the whole Bible. Throughout the whole Bible. So if it seems like, Pastor, uh, uh, these these topics you bring up seem like you levitate to various things quite often. That's all right. Because faith come by hearing, not because you heard. Okay? So I just want to throw that out there. But this is not going to be the same message, but you're going to see some of the scriptures you've seen before. You're going to hear some of the same terminology that you heard before. But we're talking about why eyes wide shut in the sense of when it comes to lust. Once again, you look, are you in 1 John chapter 2? Look with me at verse 15. And the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is in, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I got to emphasize that again. He that do the will of God abideth forever. You know, I was listening to a radio message, and I told you I listened to uh, gospel radio quite often, or, 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 uh, or, or K-Dry, you know, all teaching uh, K-D-R-Y uh, on, on uh, AM 1100. And I was listening to this preacher uh, as, as we were riding uh, home uh, the other day, Benita and I, yesterday, in fact. And man, and I wasn't even going to preach about this preacher, but I got to mention it. And after I got a third through the message, I had to shut it off. I had to shut it off. Because once again, and, and I'm going to get back into this religion thing later, but some people are so caught up in their doctrine. They close their eyes to the truth. This preacher said there are two types of Christians. This is what he said. He said there's the two type of Christians. He said there's a type of Christian that's, that's, that wants to live right and live righteous and obey God. And he said there's the other type of Christian who, who's still a Christian and still going to heaven, but he's disobedient to God. And, I, and then I said, and Benita said, Benita looked over at me and she said, what? I said, and I said, what? Because, see, the Bible talks about the children of disobedience or the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, this preacher is on, on the radio that's going across all of San Antonio and then also with their, their podcast going all around the world. And he's saying that you can be a Christian and openly disobey God. Openly be rebellion to God, but you're a Christian because you came up to the front one Sunday and accepted Jesus as your Savior. But you must have never accepted him as your Lord if you can walk in obedience and then still think you're going to heaven. That's contrary to the scriptures. It's contrary to the scriptures. So this man now has his eyes wide shut. I'll talk more about that later. But I'm going to deal with this thing of lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It, it, it once again, it, it is contrary to the will of God. And when we are walking in lust, when we are walking in lust, 
And, and, and what lust is, is having a desire. Having a desire for something that maybe you shouldn't have. But it's a yearning inside. Now let me talk about the lust of the eye. The lust of the eye is this. The lust of the eye is when you see something and you want it. Despite whether it be for you or not. Despite whether it be good or not. You see it, you want it. Paul Shepard once said in one of his messages that, that David, I'm going to be talking about David later, that David, when he was on his roof and he saw Bathsheba, he said he, he rewrote the 23rd Psalms and he said, the Lord is my shepherd and I see what I want. Yeah, but he, then he, he, Paul Shepard didn't say this, this is a Will Harrison verse, but that next verse where it says, and, and he leadeth me in the path of righteousness, well, the Lord is my shepherd, I see what I want and where he's leading, I ain't going because I want what I want. And that's what people do when you, are, when you have lust in your heart. You don't want to follow the path that God is leading you down because you want what you want. And when lust seeks in, the lust of your eyes seeks in, and you see something that you desire, it becomes sometimes even envy. Because what you want may belong to somebody else. Now I'm envying somebody for what they have, and now I want it. Or it may become covetousness. That's why the Bible says in the commandments, no, uh, thou shalt not covet. And then he went on to say, thou shalt not. God got very specific as he went on teaching. My Bible scholars can tell you, God said, thou shalt not covet another man's wife. Well, what did David do? He coveted another man's wife. He coveted. He wanted something that belonged to somebody else because the lust that was in his heart. And he wanted it so badly, his eyes were wide shut. Because David knew the commandments. He knew the law. He knew he was wrong. <laughs> and so often, and so often people blame Bathsheba. I've, I've listened to preachers preach before on this subject, and some preachers say, well, she knew that the king be up on his roof, and his roof is up high, and it sees in everybody's yard and, and everything, and and she was out there bathing naked. Now the Bible didn't say she was naked. It just said she was washing herself. Cleansing herself because uh, she, she was coming off of her time. I, I like how, how one of uh, how, uh, uh, Jacob's wife said it. Said when, when Laban chased him down, he said, uh, I'm in the fashion of, of woman. <clears throat> Y'all know what that means. Okay. <laughs> And Flo came to visit, and it was now her time was over, so she was cleansing herself of her impurity. You see, and some people may say, Well, why she didn't do that in the house? Well, we don't know. It doesn't say. Some people may have bathed out in New York, because once again, the houses back then weren't like the houses we got today. They were made, and some of them were even smaller. They were made of clay. They may have been one room, some may have had two rooms depending on the size of the house. And it was dirt floors. So she may not want to pour water on her in the dirt to make mud and then walk in the mud. I don't know. But for whatever reason, it was late at night. She didn't know anybody was out there on the roof because the Bible says that David was going to bed. He was asleep, but he had trouble sleeping and he rose up out of his bed and he went for a walk on the roof. And then he looked over and saw Bathsheba. And he saw that she was beautiful. He said, let me say it like we say it on the east side. The girl was fine. He saw that, ooh, I see. <laughs> and his heart felt lust. Now, the lust of the flesh. Now, after you done lusted in your eyes, and now, 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 and, and I want to talk, talk about that lust of the eyes because when, when you see something that you desire so much, and you see it, and you know that it's not for you, you know that it's wrong, you close your eyes. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, you can turn there if you want, but you don't have to. In Matthew chapter 5, it's there. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said when a man looks at a woman to lust after her, 
Now, he didn't say just look at a woman because, once again, I've said this before and it bears reiterating. I can look across this, this auditorium and I see all of you beautiful women that are out here and, and I can't help for seeing you. But if I start lusting after you, then Jesus said to his disciples, then you have committed adultery in your heart already. In your heart already. Now, 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 ladies, I'm going to say something and I hope it don't offend you, but I'm going to talk to the men. Men, you know what it is to commit fornication or adultery in your heart. That's why the Bible tells us to cast down imagination and every thought that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Because, because now, now, ladies, uh, we only have one young man in here, well, a couple of young men. But I think they understand this thing already. When we get the lusting in our hearts so much, we start imagining that girl we want to be with or that woman we want to be with. And then even in our sleep, things start happening in our bodies. Am I telling the truth, brothers? Amen. Now, ladies, I don't know how it happens to y'all. But I know that some, some women do have maybe dreams about their dreamboat guy and being with him in a romantic way. Now, I don't know what goes on in your body, but us men, things start happening. Things start happening. Even as though we were there. Now, I'm talking plain, and I need to make it plain because that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that men, when we look upon a woman to lust after her, then we have already committed adultery in our heart. Why? Because you've seen the act, and you have committed it in your heart. To the point where even in your subconscious, things start happening. And you go into that thing with your eyes wide shut. To the point where after you lust with your eyes, then comes the lust of the flesh. You move to a place, you move to a place, now you're going to act upon that thing that you imagine. You're going to act on it. I said, well, I need to approach this girl because she's fine. I'm gonna, hey, buddy, who is that woman? Oh, that's Bathsheba. That's Uriah's wife. Uriah? Yeah. He's, he's one of the men out in the front where you should be. He's on the battlefield. Matter of fact, Uriah is one of your special forces guys. He's one of your mighty men of valor. One of, your, one, of your, one of your mighty 37. He is, isn't he? Yeah. He's out on the front. She's here, I'm here. Go get her for me. He acted on. Go get her for me. Go get her for me. Eyes wide shut. Knowing he was wrong. Knowing it was against the will of God. See, that's why here in the scriptures in St. John, uh, I mean, 1 John chapter 14, once again, chapter 2, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 2 in, in verse 17, and it says, and the, and the world pass away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. See? Mm. Got to do God's will. Got to do God's will. And sometimes we'll walk in a manner, men, ladies, Young men, young women, with our eyes wide shut, knowing it's wrong, knowing it's wrong, knowing that it's wrong. The Bible says when it comes to the lust of the flesh, say in James chapter 1, verse 13, it says, don't let a man say that when he is tempted, he's tempted of God, because God tempts no man with evil. And neither can he be tempted. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of what? His own lust. On what desires that he have in his own heart. That's why Jesus said uh, to his disciples, Jesus told his disciples after the scribes and Pharisees told Jesus, you know, uh, uh, why do your disciples transgress the commandments of God? Because 
they, they, they don't wash their hands when they eat. And Jesus said, look, it's not what goes in the mouth that, that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of the mouth. Because what comes out of the mouth comes out of the issues of the heart. And he said, in the issues of the heart, and then one of the things he, he mentioned was adulteries, fornication, hatred, variance, all these type things. But yet sometimes we enter into these areas and, 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 and I believe the Lord having me to, to, to speak on this so we can so he can talk to his body and say, brothers and sisters, don't enter into sin with your eyes wide shut. Knowing that it's wrong, but you're going to do it anyway. I've been there. Come on, now I'm not going to stand here and act like I'm, you know, so holy that I've never never done something stupid because I have and I knew I was wrong when I was doing it but see God wants us to come to the place see I told y'all before and it bears reiterating a few years ago I told y'all before I'm determined to live holy and God has taught me how to battle these things see with, with brothers when we have that men's conference when we have that men's conference, strengthen the brethren uh, uh, men's conference, that's what the conference is all about, teaching men how to battle the flesh and the ways of the world. But God wants us to teach all the saints, men, women, boys, and girls, how to battle the flesh, how to battle the devil. And we have to open up the eyes of our understanding and not shut off, not shut off the truth not shut off the truth. Because so often we can see the truth. We know that it's true. We know that it's right. And we know what we're about to get into, what we're about to do, what we're about to attempt is wrong as, 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 wrong as a football bat. Do you get it? Yes, when we know it is as wrong as a football bat. Have you ever heard of a football bat? No, because you don't play football with a bat. You play baseball with a bat. So here we are for the play some football. And somebody come out there with their bat. Boy, you got the wrong game. You got the wrong game. Well, I'm going to play this game with my back, whether you want me to or not. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. We got to realize when things are wrong, we need to leave it alone. The world now are embracing so many things that are wrong. Embracing them. Our youth are embracing so many things that are wrong. And even though they know the truth, they've heard the truth, they want to walk in the ways of the world. Eyes wide shut. You know, Samson had the same problem David had. The Bible says in, in Judges chapter 14, verse 1, it says it's right there. And Samson went down to Tim Nam and he saw a woman. Y'all wonder what? I'm going to tell you, it wasn't just cutting Samson's hair that, that took away his strength, it was Samson's disobedience. Samson violated every Nazarite vow that God gave him. And it started with the lust. The lust of his eyes. The lust of his flesh. After he left Tim now, he went in uh, 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 to another area, I want to call the, the city, uh, and, and he went into a harlot. And then, right after he left that city, he ran into Bathsheba, and he was so in love with her. So in love with her eyes wide shut. And she constantly trying to find the secret of his strength. Come on, can't you read the sign, Samson? And then the pride of life, watch this, the pride of life, when Samson, after he gave Bathsheba all of his heart and told him, well, I have never, my hair has never been cut since I was born. And if, if my hair get cut, if you cut the seven locks of my hair, I'll be as weak as any man. The pride of life, watch this, watch this. 
Samson, when Bathsheba had his hair cut. When, when, when Delilah, thank y'all very much. When, 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 man, because I'm mixing these two women up. When Delilah had his hair cut, thank you. When Delilah had his hair cut, she did scream, Samson, the Philistines are upon us. And, and you read your Bible, it's there. Chapter 16 of, 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 of Judges. He got up and he says, well, I will get up once again like I've done before and shake myself. And then the scripture says, not knowing that the spirit of God, that God, the power of God had departed from him. He got up in his arrogance, in his arrogance. And when someone has the pride of life, that's what they are. They're in their arrogance. They become manipulators, liars. They become boasters, proud, haughty. Proverbs tells us, uh, Proverbs chapter 16, I think it's verse 18, tells us that, that, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. But uh, uh, sometimes when we're being corrected, we don't want nobody to tell us nothing. We want to do what we want to do, knowing that it's wrong, knowing that what we're going to get involved in is wrong. It's wrong by our, our whether it, if you're a child, is wrong by your parents' rules, is wrong by the, the, the word of God, by the law of God. But we want to do it anyway. I want to live my own life, my way. All right. Do that but know what the consequences are when you do. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Now, David and Samson both repented. David didn't repent until it was revealed to him by, by, by Nathan. Nathan revealed to him by telling him a story and David's pride said, who would do such a thing like that? And then Nathan said, you're the man. And God read it out to him through the prophet David and said, look, I've given you this, and I've given you that, and I've given you this, and, and, and you go and take the wife of Uriah. But David repented, and that's where Psalm 51 is a recording of David's repentance. And if we ever, if you read that on your own, I'm not going to spend the time to read that whole chapter to you again, but read it again and again and again. If you are in a place right now that you have walked into a situation with your eyes wide shut, that you've closed your eyes and your mind to the truth so that you can embrace the lies, so that you can embrace the wrong, so that you can embrace the sin. How did he cleanse it? How do a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God and open up your eyes so you can see the truth and repent. Turn away from sin and turn to God. The Bible says, walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then get into the things, what, get into the spirit of God and the things of God and the word of God. So you will be doing the will of God. Samson, he didn't repent until after his eyes were put out. His eyes were burned out. And then after his eyes were burned out, his hair began to grow back. And then his eyes were open and he prayed. He prayed and he, and he asked the Lord, you know, First he asked the Lord to forgive him, and then he asked the Lord to strengthen him again. And the Bible lets us know that in that time, Samson destroyed more Philistines in his death than he ever did in his life. But he repented, and he called on God, and he obeyed God. He did the will of God at his death. We don't have to wait to our death to do the will of God. We can start doing the will of God right now. Right now, while our eyes are still wide open. Don't shut your eyes to the truth. Not you, but people you know. This message may not be for you individually, but I believe it is. Because you're going to be tempted with things that are going to pull at you and are going to pull at the desires of your heart. 
and your mind and your flesh. And you need to know you've got to battle those things through the word of God and, to do, and continue to do the will of God. You've got to cast down imagination and every thought and anything that will try to exalt itself against, once again, against the knowledge of God. But you've got to know what God's words say. You've got to have the knowledge of God in you. so that your eyes will be open. Jesus said, when you know the truth, it's the truth that makes you free. But you gotta know it. You gotta know it, and not just know it in a way where, hey, I got the knowledge of it. No, know it in a place where it's intimate, that the, your eyes are open to the truth, to apply the truth. That's why, once again, once again, these familiar scriptures, that's why James said in James 1.22, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving, tricking, and fooling your own self. When you know the truth, apply the truth to your life. And it'll open it, it'll enlighten. The Bible uses the word enlighten you. And it'll enlighten you. it give you revelation. See, the entrance of God's word brings life, light, and love. It brings the light of the truth. Don't keep your eyes shut. But if you're here today and this is, this is, you feel like, well, Pastor, you know, I'm walking in the truth. Maybe this is something for you to share with somebody else who you see going astray, who you see following the world and the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Because these things are not of God. Now you tell them, they, they need to open up their eyes so they can see. Because they're walking around with their eyes. Wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Go with me very quickly. <clears throat> and we're about to close. Go with me to Galatians. Well, uh, once again, Galatians 5, 16. You don't have to go there. Uh, uh, walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Romans chapter 13 verse 14 says uh, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Make no provision for your flesh. David made a provision for his flesh. Samson made a provision for their flesh. Samson went on even to tell his father and his mother I seen a woman down in Timnath, a daughter of the Philistines, knowing he shouldn't be marrying a Philistine woman. And then he told his dad, his mom, get her for me. And not even nicely. Get, and he said it again. Get her for me. I hope you don't let your children talk to you like that. You don't need that. I want it. I want it. Get it for me. It's not for you. It's not for you. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. It's important that we understand that we need to open up our eyes because God said that Satan, the God of this world, blinds the eyes or blinds the mind Blinds the minds of them that don't believe. Blinds them. And when their minds are blinded, their eyes are wide shut. Let's pray.